Hello Whistlers everywhere, um, good to see you all again uh, and thanks for having a look at this video. Uh, today's video is going to be on practicing and some helpful hints and techniques uh, and things that I teach and I use both myself in my own uh, practicing and how I like to teach others in terms of helpful hints and skills which you can develop which will hopefully make your practice uh, a little bit more useful and a little bit more productive. So um, what is practicing um, and what isn't practicing? Well practicing is to be able to do something that you couldn't do previously and even if it's just working on one single ornament or one small part of a tune um, might be working on a phrase or a section of a piece um, and what we want to try and do is have a goal in mind for the practice session on that piece uh, and the, like I said the goal might be improving your cleanliness and ornamentation it might be improving your fingering it may even be um, working on your breathing and, and uh, trying to figure out where you're going to breathe effectively in the piece without altering the flow of the piece. So how you can break down your practice is really small uh, bite-sized pieces and have definite goals in mind of what you want to achieve within that practice session. Now whether you achieve them in that practice session or not is another thing but it's always good to have some goals in mind when you're practicing uh, and it helps you to focus on what you need to practice. Um, what practice isn't, it's not just playing a tune all the way through from beginning to end and uh, just keep repeating it and repeating the whole tune until you get it right. I mean, I suppose you could do it that way, but it's a very labor intensive and rather a laborious way of doing it. Um, and playing is not practicing because you don't have any definite goals in mind of what you want to improve uh, and playing a piece of music is fine and it's all good but it's not the most productive way of practicing so bearing that in mind what i'm going to do uh, in this video is go through a few practice hints that i use um, so the first one is when i'm looking at a piece of music i'll break it down and look at phrases or even bars within themselves. So the tune I'm going to work with today is a uh, is a lovely jig. It's also a set dance. Uh, it's called the Drunken Gauger. And there's a few different versions of this, uh, but uh, the one that I'm going to do is a three part jig. And I'm gonna break it down and I'm going to explain how I'm going to use the various different techniques that I incorporate into practicing. So first off is choose a suitable tempo. Uh, one of the mistakes people make is to try and do something too quickly and try and practice it too quickly and all that will happen is you'll just end up frustrating yourself uh, and we don't want any whistle thrown through the window or uh, <laughs> broken or damaged in any way. Um, so slow careful and steady is always a really good way to start your practice. Um, use a metronome, certainly can use a metronome and it's a good idea to set a metronome uh, not too quickly. Uh, to start with I always like to start around about 60, uh, 60 beats a minute and in 6-8 and a jig so that'll be two groups of three uh, notes and the dotted crotchet or the dotted quarter note will be equal to 60 which is this speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, two, three, four. One, two, one, two. So that's a nice kind of tempo which I can work with when I'm first starting off learning this piece. If you want to go slower, even better. If you need to go slower, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you could even start out at 50 if you needed to. Uh, I wouldn't go too much slower than 50 because it's probably going to be difficult with slowing it down to uh, something like 40 because you're going to have lots of gaps in between your notes and 
it might not help if, uh, as much as slowing it down to something which is like 50 or 60, uh, certainly on the, on a jig, but I've set mine to 60. Um, so with this piece, the Drunken Gauger, it starts on a D, but it starts on the last beat. So it counts one, two, three, four, five, six. So we come in on the beat number six. And again, it's known as an anacrusis, or it's also just a pickup note. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, and the anacrusis, which starts on the D, um, we've picked that up on the repeat as well. So in the last bar, we've only got one, two, three, four, five beats, because the sixth beat is the beginning or that solo, that solo note, that D, at the beginning, um, just before we come into the first bar. So that balances that bar out. And the same thing happens in the, on the third and fourth lines. Um, and then at the end, we don't have that anacrusis, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, but we do have only five beats, and that's to compensate for the pickup note we have at the beginning. So that balances the whole piece out to become uh, a full bar of six. A bit confusing, I know, but <laughs> those are the rules of written music. Anyway, so I'm going to start, and I'm going to set my click. And first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to listen to the beat. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Okay, so if I feel that's a little bit too quick, I can set it down to 50. Um, which is down to this one, two, three, four, five, six, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to start at 50 because that's a nice tempo which I can work with. So I'm just going to have a look at the first phrase two, one, two. Okay, so within that first line, first phrase, uh, if I want to work on specific things, I might look just look at the first two bars, and then what I might do is just what I call loop them. So I just play around those two bars, go back and keep repeating it, because I want to work on those cuts on the B and the cuts on the A in the second bar. So I'm just gonna loop it. can do is loop the single bar that's the second bar or second measure and just go around that and just make that a smaller loop so I can go two and that way I'm practicing my cuts on the B and on the A Okay, so if I look at the third and fourth measure. So I've got that short roll on the high G. And say I want to practice that. Again, I can set my click. And just loop that bar. Two. just broke it down into the first four notes and just kept working on that high G short roll. So now what I can do is put those three bars together. One, two.
and then with the last bar so I might want to practice and loop the whole of that phrase so again one two Okay, so if I make a fumble and go back and loop it again. Okay, um, you can work on single bars if you want. Say like that last bar where I first made a fumble. I can just go around that a few times. Then do the bar before. put it together uh, with the click. Now if I wanted to breathe in a different place because I wasn't quite happy with that breathing there so I'll think about the breathing and loop it again. So that way I'm thinking about where I'm going to breathe, I'm thinking about my ornamentation, I'm thinking about my cuts and my rolls, but I'm also listening to the metronome and making sure that my beat, my pulse is in keeping with that at 50. Okay, so I'll have a look at the second line now. Now those two bars I can loop around again and just practice those. In the second measure on the second line if I've got that one bar where I just want to practice those cuts again I can loop that bar just on its own then put it with the bar before Click. Two. Okay, and then I'm going to add the last two bars. Now I play my ending just a little bit different from that. Um, I go A, G, F, G. Um, you can play it as written. But the way I learnt it, A, so if you want to play the B, G, 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 that's absolutely fine, or you can play it the way I just did it, which was A, G, F sharp, G. So now I'm going to put the whole of the second line together and just loop that second line. So the other thing I did in the penultimate bar of that line Rather than playing A, G, A, I did a long roll on the A, and that's absolutely fine to make those changes. You can either play it as this, but I'm more used to playing it as a long roll on the A, so I'm going. So 
So once I've got that first line, I can play through it at 50 with the click. So the rhythm is all important. Never ever practice anything out of time. Yeah, because you're not practicing uh, counting the rhythm and the rhythm, especially in dance music, is all important. So please, please, please never practice anything out of time and just think, well, I'm just gonna practice the notes. You're not, no, you're practicing the wrong thing. The rhythm is all important. So, so here we go from the top. So on the second measure of the second line, I like to substitute that AGA for a long A roll, so it's going to go. And if I want to loop that again, I can just go around that phrase. And then maybe take it from the bar before. And then that line and so I can continue with the same way working on that you may only work on the first uh, a part in your practice session and that's absolutely fine um, yes don't try to do too much in your practice session and don't try and learn too much in your practice session yeah um, also consistency is an important part of your practice session um, if you do 20 minutes half an hour as often as you can that's pretty much every day um, it's going to be a lot better than doing nothing for five days and then doing two three hours in the weekend and then leaving it Consistency is the key, and if you do something consistently and methodically, working on it, you'll eventually get it. But don't try and do too much in your practice session in one go. Um, and so what I'll do now is I'll play the B part and the C part at the same speed. And again, you can incorporate those um, practice hints that I've given you about going back looking at the bits you struggle with and then just putting them on a loop and just going around that so in the uh, the second part the b part where it starts on uh the d again it's that anacrusis that bit which comes on the last beat of the bar before so i've got now going up you might struggle a bit with that um so you might want to just work on that again, put it on a loop. So again at 50. And so there I'm practicing going around that um, G, B, D, and then the high short roll on the G. And so getting that finger down to play the high G roll is a bit tricky. So, 
So this finger has to come down a fraction before we cut and tap the G. And it takes a bit of practice, so slowly. And eventually, you can gradually speed it up. And again, taking your time, making sure that your technique is working for you and that the most important thing that you're playing it in rhythm. So again, setting my click to 50. And then the next bit. And again, we've got that high arpeggio. What I like to do is put a long roll on the A and not play it as two separate A's. So I'm gonna go. Um, so. around those two bars yeah a rolls they're probably a and b rolls are the are the nastiest because this finger here is not always uh, the easiest finger to move freely up and down and in rhythm so yeah, if you want to practice your long high A roll, that's a good place to do it. So what I can do now is then look at the second line, same thing. bit and again I'm substituting that G A G A sorry for a long roll so now I'm going to play through the whole of the B part to one, two. And again, if I want to practice the last two bars, I can loop those. Okay, so once you get through the whole piece and you're comfortable with playing it all then you can start putting it together and playing through the whole piece. Um, but it's nice to work on the bits, or rather it's essential to work on the bits, which are causing you trouble. And isolating those bits and working on them separately. And again, good idea to use click. You don't have to use the click all the time, uh, but it's useful. So what I'm gonna do now, to end this video is I'm going to uh, whiz my click up to 60 which is as fast as I want to play this tune and I'm going to play it through twice for you uh, so you can have a listen and uh, hopefully get some insight into what we can do in terms of practice. Um, just before I do that I'm just going to recap on some of the things that I've talked about. So in terms of practice it's not playing through a piece of music yet. Yeah? It's not just playing the tune over and over and over again. It's working on specific parts of the tune which are giving you problems, which may be technique, it may be um, breathing, it might be a number of different issues. 
um, and always, always, always golden rule, never practice anything out of time. Always practice in time because the timing is all important. It's the foundation. Um, then you add the notes and make sure you've got the rolls and the cuts and everything uh, nice and clean. Uh, so, and again, uh, consistency, practice regularly, even if it's 15, 20 minutes every day, it's much better to practice regularly and play every day than it is to say play just loads over the weekend and then just leave it because uh, we're not instilling uh, the habits that we need to instill uh, to working on the finger and muscle control, the dexterity and the breathing which you're going to need to be able to play this tune uh, carefully and in time rhythmically and with good accuracy. Okay, so I'm going to play this tune through twice with the click uh, and you'll be able to hear it as I play it. I make a few slight different changes here and there but it's pretty much the same tune so try and follow it if you can. So some helpful tips for practicing. Um, I hope you uh, managed to get through the tune okay. Any problems, any issues, anything you're not sure about, I'm happy to answer all your questions. Uh, you can send me an email at ben at benwalker.org or you can leave a comment here or if you want to contact me through Facebook, my Facebook page is Ben Walker 
hyphen music. Um, yeah, just contact me um, and I'm happy to have a chat with you regarding some of the issues you may have uh, encountered during practice, some of the hurdles which you're encountering and uh, yeah, happy to help in any way I can. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope to see you all again soon and goodbye for now.